Next we have up Mike Simpson. Mike and I met when he was managing the Fraser Basin Council office in, uh, in Kamloops. He is a professional forester, a very good facilitator, and someone who does a lot of wildfire round table facilitation across the province, so around the region of the province. So Mike, over to you. Great. You. Thanks, Sergeant, and you'll do my slides. Yep, yep. Thanks everybody. Um, great opportunity. Thanks uh, for having me here tonight. Thanks, Arjun, for helping arrange it. And uh, yeah. I look forward to <laughs> chatting to some people that I don't know. Um, question, just to know my audience. How many of you live in the city of Kamloops? So the majority of people. How many of you then live outside of Kamloops? Maybe in a rural area or a different city? So different city, pick. Um, rural property outside the city. Rural property outside. So that was going to be my other question is, you know, do any of you have any like family recreational properties in a rural place? Yeah. So a few of you. Hey. And then the other question is, has anyone ever heard of the term fire smart before? Yeah. So a few, but not all. Okay, this is good. Okay, thanks. Next slide, Arjun. So nobody wants this, and I and I I'm thinking about. I just met on child tonight, I go in Garnet and I just met Joe. You know, it was really neat because like I didn't know we didn't really know what each of us were gonna talk about. So I think we're really tackling some different things. Um, this is a picture of Fort McMurray, uh, Alberta, which was a wildfire that started in early May twenty sixteen and it devastated the community. I still think it is the largest evacuation in North America. Like 80,000 people evacuated out of the city. Um, so, this is what I'm focusing on in terms of being prepared for wildfire season. We don't want this to happen here. Uh, next slide. Um, Arjun, you mentioned Lytton, I think, or somebody mentioned Lytton yeah. earlier. This is a, a picture of Lytton, which burned on June 30th, 2021, um, which was at the end of the heat dome in which temperatures reached 49, 50 degrees Celsius in Lytton. They reached in my neighborhood, so I live in Upper Sahali here in Kamloops, and I have a, a Norway maple tree, which is not native to Canada, and I was raking leaves in early July. Like, it shedded like a third of its leaves after that heat dome. I think it hit 46 <coughs> degrees in my house, even at that elevation. Um, and that was when Lytton burned down. Um, but, it's not all, oh, go back once. Um, it's not all doom and gloom. Um, and part of the messaging and some of the work that I do with uh, people around preparing for wildfire in communities and the people that I work with, um, and the credit, I want to mention the name there, Alan Westhaver, in a minute. Um, he brings forth a message that we're not at the will of wildfire that's like some beast that the media sort of sometimes portrays it as that has a mind of its own and is like attacking one community or attacking another. You know, there's methodical ways about how wildfire works. It's really just science in terms of things burning, oxygen, heat, and fuel. Um, and so his message and my message to you folks here tonight, just as like a, a regular you know, group of Camus citizens and people from around the area, is that this does not have to be what we face if there's wildfires in the area. And the answer is... Sorry, I thought you thunder, I apologize. <laughs> it's okay. Um, the, it's hard to get good help these days. Uh, the answer is fire spread in a lot of ways. And, and this is what um, you know, we call a values out approach. And so the idea is that if you want to protect your home or your recreational property or whatever building or structure, you know, you work from that structure and you protect it out um, in terms of reducing the risk of wildfire. Now, just a little bit about Alan Westhaver. I don't know, does anyone know him in the room? Garnet might. <laughs> okay. Um, so Alan is uh, a wildfire scientist and a natural resource person. He worked for Parks Canada, putting fire on the land in Banff National Park and other places for, for decades. And he's also one of the originators, when I asked earlier about that term fire smart, he, he and a number of others started this whole idea of fire smart, like back working with people in the States and in Alberta uh, back in the 90s. So what, he's what I call one of the godfathers of fire smart. And those two pictures prior, Lytton and Fort McMurray, he does work now with some other uh, fire scientists, you know, where they go into those areas where there's been disasters and they look at why did this home burn down and why did this one not? 
because there are homes that survive those devastating wildfires that wipe out our neighborhood. And what they do is like forensic work to understand what were the contributing factors. And, and a lot of that science goes into the updated fire smart guides. Um, and so the, really the key thing is if your value is your home or your garage or your whatever building, that 1.5 meters, that immediate zone, I mean, we're only talking a distance from here to my feet. You want to have nothing flammable. And us foresters, we use the term fuel, fuel management a lot. And basically what we mean, I always think that people think, you know, jerry cans of fuel. We're talking anything that burns. So we're talking cedar hedges. We're talking, um, you know, wood chips, wood uh, bark mulch that's in your garden, maybe next to your house. We're talking um, vegetation and like the landscaping that we put in, as well as piles of firewood, as well as like patio furniture that are cushions and things like that. You know, everything burns when you think about it, unless it's rock or, you know, eventually it will burn. So the key thing here, and then the other key learning that, you know, we like to tell people too, is that beyond 30 meters, so about 100 feet, beyond that extended zone, if there's a fire, like a wall of flames, radiant heat doesn't light something on fire 30 meters away. Like it's pretty much proven. And so, out to 30 meters, you know, you can have some trees, you can have different things, but as you get closer to that value, that 1.5 meters from here down, you don't want to have cedar hedges, you don't want to have junipers. I walk around my neighborhood in Upper Sahali every day and I look and I, you know, knowing what I know, I see the world through what's going to burn. And that's kind of what I encourage people to do, to think about fire smart in your home, is what's flammable. And uh, you don't want anything really flammable that's going to be an issue right next to your home. So there's lots of resources available. Um, that last bullet though, you can do assessments yourself. There's lots of apps available. You can get old school paper guides, um, but also increasingly more now in the city of Cambridge, they've had it for a while, but also in the TNRD, Thompson Nicola Regional District, and a lot of regional districts. Most communities now have somebody that you can call and they'll come out and do a fire smart assessment of your home and help you identify like what are the things that you should do. Um, so next slide please. The, the thing that I mentioned earlier that Alan always likes to um, dispel is this idea that fire has a mind of its own, it's a beast, and that it's a wall of flame that's going to push through our communities. That's not how homes burn. I mean from the work that they've done and the research and analyzing past wildfires, it's the embers, a shower of embers um, that's going to, you know, catch your home on fire, like 99% of the time. And so the real challenge there then, back to the fire smarting piece, one of the key things that you can do that's easy, it doesn't have to be expensive, is, um, you know, spring and fall maintenance. Like, look at where there's dead dry leaves from last fall, like, under your deck, in your window wells, you know, off in a corner, maybe it's in your eaves. It's those sorts of things, those really dry materials that when it's like 30 plus degrees in the summer, um, there's lots of parts of Kamloops where there isn't gonna be a wall of flames like carried by a forest, but embers can travel <coughs> tens of kilometers. In fact, last year, the West Kelowna fire that started you know, on the west side of Okanagan Lake, the fire that started north of Kelowna on the other side was started by embers, and I think that was 12 kilometers distance. So, so really, I would encourage you, if you want to fire smart your home, and if you haven't, really look around your home for that lens of, if, em if I get a shower of embers, what's going to light on fire? And so that's the, the key thing. Next slide. Um, that's a picture from not quite a year ago in my neighborhood, you know, not that far away. I, I couldn't get a really good picture of it. I had to look for it. But there was some sort of a fire that started undisclosed how, how it lit these cedar hedges. And a lot of foresters, Garnet and others included, we hate cedar hedges. You know, they're just a fire trap. And also, they're not ecologically appropriate in Kamloops anyway. You know, it caught these cedars on fire, which caught the garage on fire, which burnt half the house down. And, you know, I think Kamloops Fire Rescue, I, I kept retweeting 
or reacting, I don't know what you call it now. <laughs> uh, you know, because Headless Fire Rescue was putting out, like they were doing really good messaging about this is why you need to manage and fire smart and get rid of your cedar hedges. And I kept retweeting that. So we tried to get the, the word out. Next. So the, really the, I kind of have like three key messages then as I was thinking as I prepared for tonight. So the first one is fire smart your home or your recreational property or where you live or if you're renting or you're a larger building, look around that building and like talk to your landlord. Like, hey, these, uh, we call them jackpot junipers. Like, right up against the wall of your house, they're gonna catch on fire and it's gonna light your roof on fire. You know, do things about that. The other, the second key advice is have good information. Um, and I put a number of sources there. You know, don't rely on your crazy neighbors or things you see on Facebook. There was a lot of circumstances of that in previous wildfire years where people just go, they get the wrong information and they start freaking everyone else out. So go to a legitimate source. And then the other one is no matter where you live, regional, district, or city, um, here it's volume to alert. In other places, Smithers or whatever, it might be a different system, but you know, there's some, beyond just the provincial alert system, there's some sort of a local system where if there's a, a fire. So that's the other third key thing, is just sign up for that. So that's my thoughts on being prepared. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks, Mike.